Today we're going to talk about a feud. I guess you call it a feud? I don't know if it's a feud, but it is Mr. Wonderful. Kevin O'Leary has called out Elon Musk, which I have my own opinions on Elon Musk and his morally wrong. Is it morally wrong to work from home? We'll discuss that on the other side. Take your guard and let it down. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Work Wherever Podcast. This is a podcast where we talk about artificial intelligence, automation, the ability to work wherever so you can live every day like it is Saturday. And uh, we've come under some fire. Not necessarily this podcast, but the ability to work wherever has come under some fire by kind of an unknown. Well, not an unknown. He's very well known. But an an unknown reason as to why Mr. Musk hates remote work so much. It's it's pretty weird. For those of you who are not familiar with what it is that I'm talking about, Elon Musk went on a news outlet, I believe it was Fox News, where he was quoted as saying that those who work from home are morally wrong, and that it's not fair that some people get to work remote where others don't. And he called it, the movement, morally wrong, saying that it it was that people need to get off their high horse, that how, how dare you think you're better than other people, that you get to work remote and others don't. Which, I... I don't understand where this comes from, from Musk. It is pretty weird. It's a pretty weird conversation to be had. I feel like maybe he is trying to get his employees back to the office or he's trying to set a specific standard, but it it, I, it is very, very weird. So it, he called, he went on a recent tirade as to... to to say that the laptop classes, meaning like there is subdivides in the economic classes, right? So you have the different classes of, he calls it the laptop classes, meaning that there is a certain person who works off their laptop, calling remote work morally wrong, and said the laptop classes are living in la-la land, is what he said. This was during an interview with CNBC. Sorry, I, I said Fox, but it was with CNBC. Musk said that he thinks it's unfair that remote workers are able to work from the comfort of their own homes, while the people that make their cars or food have no other option but to physically go into work every day. Following his com comments, many tech workers took uh, <clears throat> to call Musk a hypocrite and poke fun at his billionaire status. Morally wrong, a meta worker wrote, blah, blah, blah. So people went after him. I was no short as taking to uh, the internets to call it one of the worst takes that I've ever heard. I mean, this is from a man who now runs a tech business, one of the largest tech companies in the world, in Twitter, calling those who work from home a uh, morally wrong, morally wrong. Now, I have long viewed remote work and the ability to work from home as a benefit. It is certainly not an expectation. Uh, you shouldn't expect it out of your employee or out of your employer. It's a benefit that your that your organization provides to you. Just like health insurance is a benefit. 401k is a benefit. Dental insurance, vision insurance, uh, educational support, providing of laptops. There are all kinds of uh, health and wellness benefits. There are no shortage of benefits out there. I see remote work as another benefit. Now, as an employer, as somebody who has built a business, I see remote work as an asset. I save money. For every individual that works from home, that means less money that I have to spend on an office location. They have their own office location. They're more productive, say all the statistics, so not only am I saving money, but my employees are happier. 
they're healthier, they have more benefits, they can spend time with family. There is no shortage of reasons why I want and believe that working from home is the best option for my employees. Now, the the belief system that it is morally wrong lends to two different things. One, it's calling a benefit morally wrong. So those who do not have health insurance, is it fair that they don't have health insurance? Probably not. Maybe. But is that to say that anyone who works a job that does get health insurance is morally wrong? It's morally wrong to offer health insurance to your employees? Is that what we're saying now, Mr. Musk? Because that's remote work. Remote work is a benefit. Not everybody gets health insurance. In fact, farmers, the people who make your food, if you're going to point to those individuals, they can't work remote, but they also probably don't get health insurance from some big corporation, right? They're self-employed. Those of us who are self-employed and own organizations and own businesses know how difficult it is to get health insurance in the first place. It was very difficult for us to get health insurance. You had to hit certain metrics, and nobody wanted to do business with a small business in the beginning. I mean, this was seven, eight years ago when we were trying to trying to get health insurance and vision and dental, and we didn't get 401k until we were halfway into or being an organization more than that. I think we're only like two or three years into 401k. So, but is that to say that anyone who offers 401k, it's morally wrong to provide these benefits to their employees? Not everybody has 401k. Do these farmers, do these people who are providing jobs, these people who are making their cars, do they have 401k stock options? Does Tesla have 401k stock options for every employee that, uh, that works for them? I, I don't know that. I would doubt it. But if you do offer that to your employees, is that seen as morally wrong because some other manufacturing organization doesn't offer those same benefits? Is this where we've come to as as business to say what is what is morally wrong as to what you can offer your employees? Now, I believe that every organization should explore the opportunity to provide remote work to your employees. I know that not everyone in every single form or fashion can provide remote work to their employees. If you are in car manufacturing and you have to physically build cars and you have to be there to build something, can you work remote? No, you can't. But there are certain organizations that do provide certain individuals the opportunity to work remote. Does that mean that the people who work remote are always the highest paid individuals? That is also not true. Just because you work from home or have the ability to work from home doesn't mean that you are the highest grossing individuals. Do high, do people who work from home typically make more than those who will go into the office? That's the trend. That's the that is what the trend has been over the last 10, you know, 10 20 years. If you are in a position to work from home, you are probably in a higher grossing position, which is a good statistic to have. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that is the trends going forward. In fact, organizations in the tech industry, more specifically in the federal government contracting industry, which is the industry that my organization and Capital Presence is in, we are paying more for people to go into the office because nobody wants to do it. So this idea that it is morally wrong for somebody to, to work from home is ridiculous. It should be seen as a benefit. And benefits cannot be morally wrong. That's ridiculous. So where does Kevin O'Leary come into all of this? So Kevin O'Leary was on CNN and went after Elon Musk and had his own belief system behind remote work. And in fact, he said that he prefers employees to work from home. Kevin O'Leary said he doesn't believe remote work is morally wrong and sees it as a cost saver for the employer. For those of you who don't know, Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, he's from Shark Tank, owns all, he's a serial entrepreneur, owns all kinds of different businesses. He's one of my favorite characters on, on uh, Shark Tank, and yes, I did just call him a character. Uh, one of my favorite entrepreneurs on the show. He's not my favorite on the show. I'm a big Mark Cuban guy. Uh, but, you know, Mr. Wonderful is great. He's been a huge advocate for remote work really since 
the beginning of the pandemic, he's gone on multiple shows talking about how he wants all of his employees to do it. He, he said that uh, 40% of his companies are never coming back to the office. This guy owns a ton of businesses. And why would they? Why would they go back if they didn't have to? Does that mean that's morally wrong? Now, if you look at it simply as a cost savings for the organization to say, we don't want you to come in, you have to work from home. Maybe there's some sort of morals or ethics associated there to say, no, you have to provide yourself a computer. You have to provide yourself a workstation. You have to work from home. But that's not the position that most organizations, certainly not on this show, that we are taking when we're talking about remote work. We're talking about a benefit to be able to to make it home to eat dinner with your with your family. How many how many times has a father missed or a mother missed dinner because they had to work late? How many plays? How many recitals? How many practices? How many missed opportunities of coaching? How many uh, you name it? How many times have we missed family activity simply because we had to physically be at a at a place of work? And so now that we have the opportunity to change that in many instances, can we change it in all instances at right this second? No, absolutely not. But just because we can't do it for everybody doesn't mean that we can't do it for somebody and help somebody out. And like I mentioned before, this isn't a class, a laptop class in a sense of, of financials. There are certainly database administrators out there who are doing data entry that are not making as much as, say, a... Uh, a mechanical engineer who works on vehicles that has to physically be at a location. So it is not an economical or economical. It's not an it is not a divide based on money, based on how much somebody makes. So to call it a moral issue is ridiculous. Kevin O'Leary went on to say, "You can't." This is according to an interview that he did with CNN. You can't tell me this doesn't work, he said. In fact, I want to do more of this because I'm reducing my costs of real estate. That's what we talked about, which is the entire cloud movement. You're, you're transferring your capital expenses to operating expenses. Instead of owning physical real estate where your servers have to live, paying your... AC bill, paying your electrical bill, uh, paying for security to manage and maintain your servers in a specific building, you move them to the cloud. And now you have transferred your capital expense, physically owning those servers, into an operational expense. It is to say, how much do I actually need to use these servers? That's the cloud. You're simply transferring that model into your human capital now. To say, hey, I don't need to have a building for you guys to report to. You guys can do this from home. So why wouldn't I do that? Nobody wants to come to the office really anyways. Let me rephrase that. A select few of individuals actually enjoy coming to an office space anyways. Now, when we get to the office and we're around like-minded individuals and there are certain energies and there are certain collaborations that members like and enjoy, is that a good part of business that we should adhere to and continue to push and, and ensure that it thrives within organizations? Absolutely. At Capital Presence, we do this twice a year where we have meetups where people get together. We physically uh, are in the same space. We rented an Airbnb together. Last time we were here in D.C., we went on tours. Uh, we did collaborative uh, exercises together. We went, on, went over SOPs. We had a guest speaker who came in and spoke to my team, and we did things together. And we were, I believe it was about three days, and everybody was feeling energized and then went back home. Uh, and life was good. There's a there's a big difference between that and having to sit in an hour, tw uh, hour, an hour and a half, two hour commute every single day, missing breakfast with your kids, missing the ability to potentially homeschool, which, oh, by the way, Mr. Musk does homeschool all of his children. Could that not be seen as morally wrong? Not everybody has the ability to homeschool their children. Mr. Musk does. He has the opportunity to homeschool his children. He's homeschooled every single one of them. In fact, he created a homeschool program for the, I believe it was for Tesla employees. And one of, his, one of the members of the Tesla organization started, uh, I believe it's called Synthesis, 
which is a, a, a an application that we've touched on on this show during our homeschool episodes. So this idea that something that exists for some and not all is morally wrong is simply incorrect. That's not how the world works. That's just simply not how it works. Organizations provide different benefits to different people and different employees, even within their business. To say, if you are this, you, you can have these benefits. If you are this, you have this these benefits. In fact, if you are a less than a full-time employee, most organizations don't pay for your health insurance. Is that morally wrong? Is it morally wrong to say if you don't work 30 hours a week that you don't get health insurance? Or 401k? What about them? Or taxes? I believe if you work less than uh, 30 hours a week, then you don't even have to be a W-2. You can be a 1099, and then the employer does not pay for your taxes. Is that morally wrong? At wh- where do we draw the line here? Is it, is it simply remote work? The reason why I believe that Mr. Musk says that he doesn't want people to work remotely is because he has an emotional connection, an emotional tie to control. I believe Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, I I think he made mention of that. I looked for a quote in this article that I'm reading on Business Insider. It doesn't, he doesn't necessarily say, um, I get the idea that you want to want collaboration between engineers, O'Leary said of Musk's companies. They're sitting around trying to solve design problems or whatever, but it has nothing to do with other 10 sectors of the economy, which have already made a decision. Uh, The article goes on to say Musk has already taken strides to bring his workers into the office, which, by the way, Tesla does have a remote organ remote policies now. Last year, he told Tesla workers to return to the office full time or quit. That was a very small time period. They actually do have remote work now. I know multiple members who work for Tesla that are now working from home. He has also called Twitter staff back to the office. I actually did a podcast on that about him bringing Twitter employees back. I thought that was the right move at the time because you were disrupting a culture, a very toxic culture at Twitter that led to a lot of uh, mishandlings, we'll say. Uh, And he was trying to disrupt a culture. Tech workers, this, this, I'll, I'll just read the rest of the article here. While tech workers have spoken out against Musk's comments on remote work, other tech companies have also taken similar steps to bring wa- workers back to in person. I believe there were other uh, Silicon Valley uh, members who came out and said that they needed to get people back into the office. I believe the CEO of OpenAI and ChatGPT had talked about how it was a bad thing to have remote work and. Um, and that's that's a war that we're starting to have. And and here is the reasoning behind it. Here is the case against remote work, if you will. The case against remote work is how do I know that they're dedicated on what I'm asking them to do? How do I know that what they're working on isn't only my stuff? How do I know that they're even working? How do I know they're not charging me for empty hours? <coughs> that's the case against remote work. How do I know they're not sitting in bed, laying down, wiggling the mouse every five minutes, and then charging me 80 hours a week? How do I know that? The answer is you don't. You don't know. How do you know that somebody that commutes to your office and sits in his office is putting in 80 hours of work? How do you know then? How do you know any of your employees are actually putting in the amount of time that they say that they are? You don't. Remote work is no different. What you do know, and if you are going to implement remote work into your organizations, is you need to have KPIs. You need to make sure that your your staff, your employees, are hitting the metrics. And if they're producing. Because if they're producing... Why do you care? And I've long said this, that I believe that we're going to transition as an economy from a time in, time out to a production-based economy. It's no longer going to be, did you put 80 hours in this week or this pay period? Did you put 40 hours in this week? Oh, you put 60? Oh, you put 30? Who cares? 
it's production based. And there are there's something called the Fibonacci sequence where they go over level of effort and you do scoring so to avoid burnout. I actually interviewed somebody today who asked about overtime. They said, hey, you know, my last organization that I worked for, they were uh, very demanding. This is, this is what he said. I was like, this is when I knew that he wasn't going to be a fit. They were really demanding and they would ask for unrealistic uh, turnarounds and... And then when I would come back and say that I needed overtime, they wouldn't approve it. Do you guys approve overtime? I said, no, we don't do overtime. This the, what am I, why do you need overtime? If you're scoring appropriately, and this is my explanation, if you're scoring appropriately, meaning we have tasks, this is what you have to accomplish, okay? And our cap for a two-week period sprint is 20 points. That's the Fibonacci. Right, so the 21 would it would be the Fibonacci score. If it's a 21, you need to break it down. So 20 points per person. You said <clears throat> you scored everything in here and said that all of these things are let add up to less than 20 points. 20 points is two weeks. So you said you can get these done in two weeks. I didn't say that you can get these done in two weeks. I didn't score these. You did. So then why do you need? extra time to do something that you said that was going to take less than two weeks. Also, in our industry, in the federal government industry, it comes down to fix what's, re what's referred to as fixed firm price. The government pays us a certain amount, and that's what it costs. Now, are there certain instances where overtime has to exist and you have to approve overtime? Yeah, sure. Am I saying that if you work more than 40 hours a week, then you're not going to get, um, and I'm demanding that of you, and you're not going to get paid overtime? No. What I'm saying is, is that if you balance your workload, and you are scoring your workload, and you are communicating, over-communicating, really, what it is that you have to do in a two-week period, and you're over-communicating with the client as the expectations and manning expectations, you shouldn't need to do overtime. You should be able to get your work done in a 40-hour work week in a production-based economy. To say, I am producing this. <coughs> That's where we're headed. I've been saying this for years. And it's just one more step. Now we have people like Musk who are, who are trying to grab on to the old way of management. I want to see my employees. I don't trust my employees. I want to make sure that they work only for me. Which, hey, I hear that, man. That's a struggle. When you have employees that you believe might be working extra extra contracts, they might be hanging out with their kids at home and not sitting by the computer, they might be uh, you know, educating the future of America, you know, doing some homeschooling activity instead of developing something. How dare they, right? How dare they spend time with their family and educate their children for 30 minutes? Instead of working on something for you, that report. How dare they? It, this, this argument is mind-blowing to me. In, in, in the same breath, we say that... In the same breath, we say that remote work is morally, morally wrong. But then we say that corporations are, are, are what's wrong. That it's greedy. So why would we why would we do that? Why would we send people away from their family, away from an area where they can control their mental health, away from the area, uh, uh, away from the possibility of spending more time with family, traveling and making memories? Why would we strip them of that to send them back to an office space where they're then controlled and there are a number of check-in and for a large organization. But then call them spending with their time with their family morally wrong it doesn't it doesn't make sense are you following this at all it doesn't make any sense this is just another case of a manager this th th in this instance a very smart individual in elon musk who can't get out of the idea of having to see his employees and maintain control in all aspects of a business and it's going to ha there this is we're going to see more and more of this. We're going to see more and more, especially in the tech industry, of organizations who are saying, get rid of get rid of remote work, bring everybody back. I think it's politically motivated. 
I think that these cities, if you look at where or, uh, most of the tech organizations are, they're in California. Where was Tesla from? Tesla was California. Now they're in Texas. But these organizations are, are California-based, left-leaning cities. And so why would left... Why would left-leaning cities want to go against something that seem, is seemingly more progressive in remote work? And I, I think it is simple. I think that is to rebuild the democratic cities. I think that the cities are losing a ton of money. We did a podcast where we talked about New York and how they'd lost $14 billion that they pointed to remote work, saying that that was the, that was the issue. If you look at uh, San Francisco, heroin is a huge problem in, in San Francisco. Homelessness is a huge problem throughout really all of California, but San Francisco is in big trouble. That's like the capital of technology, you could argue. So th- we're not done. We're not done with this. Guys, hope you uh, enjoyed this episode. We're on all social platforms. If you have any questions, we'll start answering some questions on here. Hit the questions in the comments on the on the YouTube if you're following us on YouTube. Uh, like and subscribe on, also, on all of our uh, podcast platforms, Spotify, iTunes, wherever your podcasts are found. You can go to GoWorkForever.com to catch up on all episodes and learn about all the things that we're doing over there, including taking some personality quizzes to see where you fall on our on our scale Maybe you're an innovator, maybe you're a laggard, and then when you find out your personality, you can listen to the show and see who I'm speaking to, and if you're one of them. Guys, thanks for hanging out. Until next time, see Hey there. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for all the latest videos from Capital Presence.